So, okay, we're going to get started because I'm sure you all have stuff to do. Um, so, basically what this is, it's kind of the hub version of Meet Your Advisor Day, which like last fall, you um, probably have friends who are not engineers. They had to go sit in a classroom like the second or third week of school and, you know, get talked to by their faculty advisor. We tried to make it a little bit more casual, even though it doesn't look like we're all very casual. But anyway, after this formal conversation, um, we have snacks and you're welcome to come and hang out. Your faculty advisors are going to hang out for a while, so like I'm hoping that it, it devolves into something a little less formal. Um, so what we're going to cover today is we're going to talk through um, like the advising model that we use. Um, I do. Okay. Um, this is our little sign that says we cooperate with faculty, like we're, we're shaking hands and like, you know, <laughs> it's a partnership, right? Um, so, um, and as that part of that partnership, um, we're going to lovingly, after this semester is over, hand you over to your faculty advisors, who you will be meeting a little bit more. You're also going to meet Kate Stockton, who's right here on my left. Um, we're going to meet some lovely undergrad and graduate um, students of both of these faculty members. Um, and um, we're going to have time for questions, and we're going to talk about curriculum, internships, courses, all sorts of fun stuff today. Um, so first of all, um, when you got your invitation um, from me to this event, it would have had your advisor's name in there. So who are official advisors of Professor Wei Ji? Okay. No, so it's not Peter. Okay. <laughs> he knows. Um, <laughs> and who are uh, Professor Emily Liu's advisees? Okay. The rest. So, yeah. Well, that makes sense, right? So yeah, you, yeah. you may not have met some of them, right? It mm -hmm. seems like way Majority, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they brought some of their students. Get away from me. <laughs> That's right. As I said, they brought some of their students with them and they're going to have a chance to talk or not talk, as the case may be, um, if they want to. Um, I also want to talk, so the advising model is obviously you're with me for the first two semesters um, and then you're going to transition over to these lovely folks. And the, the reasoning behind that model is that we consider ourselves kind of the nitty gritty of advising, right? You know, we do the down and dirty curriculum requirements, what your Haas requirements are, what the heck is a pathway, and why do I have to do it, um, those kinds of things. And then after that, you're going to have the chance to take advantage of their years of experience and expertise um, of teaching the actual classes that you're going to be taking. Um, they'll talk to you about uh, specific technical electives, because as you know, you get to choose technical electives within nuclear, and they're going to help you choose those and advise you depending on what your career path is going to be. They'll talk to you about graduate school if you want to talk about graduate school. So, you know, they'll, they're, I consider that to be kind of higher order advising. Basically, people who are way, way smarter than I am. Um, so, <laughs> a lot of pressure on them, I know. Um, so that's basically how the advising model works. And the nice thing about the main department, of which you are part of Mechanical Aerospace and Nuclear, is you also have a backup lovely faculty, uh, staff advisor. This is Kate Stockton. Um, and she works right downstairs. She'll have a slide in a second or two here, and she can talk to you a little bit about her office. So before you transition from me to your faculty advisor, we've got a couple of important dates coming up. This Friday is the drop deadline for classes. And moving forward, you know, if you drop a class by the drop deadline, it's like it never happened. It doesn't appear on your transcript. It doesn't appear anywhere. As long as you hit the drop deadline, it's like it never happened. And as you can see, it's a pretty generous deadline. So, you know, it gives you plenty of time to figure out if something's not working for you. We do, you can go on right onto SIS and drop classes yourself at any time. Uh, up to the drop deadline. We do kind of want you to talk to us about it though. I'm sure you kind of feel the same. Just to make sure you're not dropping a course that's a prereq for something else or something you might not want to drop because the uh, next class on is not offered the following semester. Those kinds of things, right? So we do kind of recommend, it's not required you consult with us, but it's not a terrible idea. Um, also the pass no credit deadline, that's not until Friday, April 10th. There's not a whole lot of classes that engineers can pass no credit. None of the ones you really want to usually. Um, and now with the new Haas pathways, there's actually even less opportunity to pass no credit Haas classes. But there are a couple that you can. Um, also free electives. If you're not doing a dual major or minor, you'll have three free electives in your program. You can also pass no credit them if you want. 
That does require a signature from your advisor, so either myself or your faculty advisor. Um, and as I said, that deadline's coming up soon. Uh, pass, passing is anything above an F. And sometimes if you're an intense semester, um, it's kind of nice to know that you have that kind of release valve, you know? Um, if you've just got a lot of things that are demanding your time and you don't want to think about that extraneous house class or something that's not part of your pathway, um, you know, it might be a good option for you. So um, the, that is a form and that does require a signature. March is consultation month. We're already in March. Hippie hooray. Um, so every um, spring, you're going to have what's called a SAM hold, preventing you from registering until you meet with your advisor. So SAM is student advisor meeting, and which means that, like it or not, you have to see me once a year. Um, after this semester, um, you're going to have to see your faculty advisor in the spring semester when you register for fall or you won't be able to register. Um, and these guys will talk about how they want you to contact them for meetings, how they approach advising in terms of do they want to see you every semester and not just once a year? Um, will they be willing to clear your SAM hold if you just email them the list of courses you want to take? Or do they want to lay eyes on you? Those kinds of things. So I'll let them talk about how they want to handle the SAM hold. For me, I would love for you to come in and talk. Some of you have already been in multiple times and we've talked about uh, what you want to take for fall and that's great. If not, um, hop on and make an appointment with me and um, you know, come on in and see me before registration opens up, which is the 23rd, okay? So now I'm gonna let Kate introduce herself and talk a little bit about her office, where it's located, and who else is in there with her. So I work in the main um, undergraduate office of student services. Um, I work with two other lovely people, Tom Haley, who's our director of undergraduate student services, but is very hard to track down. He's part-time and he also teaches. So if you're ever on the second floor on a Tuesday or Friday, maybe Wednesday, and there's a lot of people waiting outside an office, that's his office. Because <laughs> everyone, um, he also advises all of our transfer students. So that's a lot of the students are waiting for him to talk about their Sam Holds and their classes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so just a little bit about all the things that our office does. Um, so one of the things uh, Marie talked about is that we're there to help um, the faculty advisors. If they're not available and you have a question, um, most students will stop into our office. You don't always need an appointment, although we do schedule appointments. And when I say we, I'm usually the person that you're scheduling an appointment with. Julie uh, Schatz, she is our office, um, she's our administrative specialist, that's her role. So she's in the first desk when you walk in. And then we usually have work study students that are down there in our office too. So I'm the one who meets with students and advises students. Um, so you're part of Maine, so it's part of mechanical, aerospace, and nuclear engineering. We're all part of the same Maine family. Um, and our office coordinates anything that we have um, Maine students, so mechanical, aerospace, and nuclear students coming to visit the campus, so prospective students. We have kind of introduce them to what our majors are like and show them around the building. We'll meet with them and talk to them more about the majors. And then we also work with students a little bit, not much freshman year, because you guys are working with the hub, and then sophomore through graduation, okay? We coordinate a lot of the events, so if you ever see like the cookies and cocoa, if you saw that happening um, in December, um, we also uh, are going to be doing something in the spring for our students working with the School of Engineering. So we do a lot of events, um, event stuff, we work with the career services, anything that you guys need to know about um, is nuclear engineering students after you leave the hub. Um, we also help make sure our faculty advisors are kept up to date with all the information, all the changes, anything they need to know because we're kind of the ones that stay um, up to date coming from other places. So like the curriculum changes, um, anything from ALAC, anything that happens there, we make sure they're up to date. Um, so they come to us with questions. They have less advisees than obviously the entirety of all the main students. So we get a lot of questions um, at the same time. So right now we're dealing with a lot of questions from our sophomores that are planning the summer courses. They may get one or two questions. I already had, you know, maybe 20, 25 questions. So 
I'm kind of ahead of the curve of the kinds of questions they're getting, and then I can easily get them the information when they encounter something that's a little new or different. Um, the other thing, which these, uh, well, it's funny how, you know, when I'm meeting with students, it reminds me of things I should remind you guys. Just make sure that you guys have the help of the hub right now, that you're working on your four-year plans. Stick to your four-year plans because there are people, students here that are juniors and seniors that have different set of classes that they're trying to follow. And if you just look up, you know, nuclear engineering at RPI and you end up with an older template, you might end up taking the wrong classes. So work with your hub advisor, get your four-year plan. Um, anytime I meet with a student, I usually say, well, can you pull out your four-year plan so we can go back to what you t discussed with your hub advisor? And um, if, you, if they don't have a plan, then we kind of have to start from scratch. And sometimes students pick the wrong classes when they kind of do it on their own. So use, use your hub advisor as much as you can. Go with those plans. And if you do make any changes, like Marie said, it's good to check in with your advisor, either if it's still with Marie or with your new advisor because nobody is going to catch that um, unless it's sometimes too late, like you're ready to graduate and you accidentally dropped a class and you know you, your SAM hold was taken off, you registered and then you dropped a class and never took it again. Um, you know, we would hate for that to happen, but it, your completing your degree is, is your responsibility. All of us are here to help you meet that, but you, know, you have to be in the driver's seat of getting your degree, so. I think that's, yeah. You just have a picture of where your yes. office is, right at the bottom of the stairs. A bottom really? of the stairs. you guys do coffee like <laughs> Second floor, right in front of the elevators downstairs. So I encourage you to all stop in and, you know, just if you have any questions or just want to say hi, um, if you're ever looking for a work-study position, it's really nice to work in your own department because you get, kind of get the insider scoop on what's going on or any changes or, you know, anything like that. So if we have work study positions, you get work study. Ryan's a work we use the work study downstairs. So, yeah. And great. That's, that's a great place to work. I can uh, agree <laughs> more. So who you'll be meeting with today, as we said, Professor Emily Liu and Professor Weiji. And I have to say that um, Emily and I just happened to walk out of the garage together at the same time this morning and we were talking about how long we've known each other and the fact that She's been here for 13 years, which kind of blows my mind because I can absolutely remember when she came for her interview. And we were talking about that this morning. Like, I can picture sitting around that conference table when you were interviewing and you were coming from MIT. It seems like yesterday and it's 13 yes. years ago, which is kind of crazy to me. Um, so um, we'll talk about you first, if it's okay. Um, and anything that you want to share with yourself, the things that uh, about yourself, the things I'm thinking of, kind of what your background is, so the students get to know a little bit about what your background is, what made you decide to be a new, what made you decide to come to RPI and be a faculty member, um, and what courses you teach, and uh, a little bit That's about your research. <laughs> I'll, I'll remind you. I'll remind Please, you. it's okay. Right. That's why we send you an email, Professor Lowe, ahead of time. But I'll, I will prompt you. I just talked the whole day. Yeah, just a full circle. Who are you? Where are you from? Right. Where are you going? Right. What's your background? What do you do? What do you teach? What's your research? Yeah, that's it's not that hard. <laughs> one, of your, one of your students can fill some of that. No, see, <laughs> the problem is my students are not better than me. <laughs> Remember, you're remembering this. So, anyways. Uh, my name is Emily Liu, and I have been here 13 plus years, actually, plus a few months. And one of the key reasons to come here is because of Marie. She's actually my first person I met at RPI. Mm -hmm. She worked for a nuclear engineering right, yeah, at that program time. at yep. that time, and then she handled the Still near and dear to and my and heart. It's, it's a lot of things going on in the past many years, but mm -hmm. we stay still in the same unit. Mm -hmm. Come on. Uh, yeah, so the reason why I chose nuclear engineering, I, my undergrad in Beijing University was in physics, mm -hmm. and it was really too hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, only one of them was really hard. I had a hard time to understand electromagnetism, mm -hmm. and I can't draw a great picture about how uh, currents flow on the surface of an object. 
something like that. So I was like, this is a little too much. And quantum mechanics is something I like, but not so much electromagnetic. So when I looked around for grad school, and I look at looking nuclear engineering, I'm like, I ask people, what does that mean? And they say, it's an engineering version of physics. Mm. That's what I am. So of my whole study at MIT, um, my uh, background is really more in common science of physics. But when I landed at RPI, um, I started to do more nuclear engineering, actually. Finally going back to the reactor and all those things. Mm. So I was, I really developed my concept of reactor here at RPI, not in any previous years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the reason I picked RPI versus other places that I have been interviewed and also have been uh, looked around is because how nice people here are. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys started to feel that um, undergrads are being very well taken care of. And it's the same idea for the faculty and staff members. Mm -hmm and we're more like a small family instead of big state school that people, there are too many people that you easily will be completely submerged into a flood and you will never ever show up your potential. And here at RPI, at faculty level, if we do anything that is a little bit above and beyond, like I try any risk or do something, then there will be plenty of people not shy, they were gonna praise you, they were like, you're doing such a fantastic job. We really appreciate your help. You know, these type of things. If you go to big school, you don't see that. And also, luckily, in engineering school in main department, I have never really met an eagle who really just say something nasty, you know? Uh, interfere with my work and research and even the family plan I had in you know, those stressful years. You guys didn't catch my stressful years. Not that much, but <laughs> in my past, 10 years, there were some years that was really bad. <laughs> so, yeah, all these <coughs> weeks and my friends here really hold that up very well. So I never regret coming here and feel happy here. And the same thing I think for most of the students in undergrad and grad level, they feel the same thing. It's more like a big family. That's even more so for a nuclear engineering program because as long as you guys want to seek any opportunity, you will see an army behind you try to help because you know for us every person matters really that much and whatever you want to pursue we will we'll try to help. Any other questions? Awesome. Um, and what can you talk just a little bit about what your research in Oh yes. Uh, too many. Mm -hmm. my, my poor students here is like wait, wait which one are you going to talk about? But um, uh, my research majorly applies to nuclear and uh, solar energy, we study molten salts, characteris uh, characterization. My major technique is neutron scattering as a background, but we expand that to X-ray uh, scattering and also X-ray diffraction. We develop methodology for new neutron scattering techniques or X-ray techniques, and we use that to study um, complex systems, so not just traditionally uh, solids or, uh, or uh, single single crystal or something. Instead, we look at uh, complex fluids and how they change under the temperature, pressure, um, pH value, and all these things. So it's more a combination of nuclear materials and condensed matter physics study. That's um, what we're trying to do. And um, uh, reactor application, uh, like in nuclear energy, we apply that to, say, molten, re molten salt reactor. In Solar energy will apply that to concentrating solar power plant, and so the application side could be as broad as as possible. In the past, we also studied many times uh, drug deliveries for uh, mm -hmm. pharmaceutical companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you know it's it's all the same technique, but being applied it to different uh, application. Mm -hmm. And also, we're adding that to engineering economics and other things. Mm -hmm. um, some interesting topic that we have been looking at for a long time, but I never really did a gigantic research on. It's like sustainability, economic sustainability of reactors. And also first, um, how do I say, that uh, disaster responses, mm -hmm. communications for disaster responses. All these interesting things my uh, past many years with students sometimes be forced or sometimes being challenged to do those things. 
So wow, that's a lot. Man. Yeah, that's what I'm like. Which one are you, do you want me to talk Whoa. about again? Holy smokes. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Wow. And the only thing that the, my students ask me is that I'm not supposed to do all those. <laughs> right. All right. They ask. Like, yeah. I'm not supposed to do all of those, right? Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> Just one. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah. So, um, Professor Wei Ji, um, I probably have known you since the day you came here as well, I feel like. Absolutely, even before. <laughs> Three ch children yeah. and all of that, so yeah. that goes back a long ways. Yeah. Um, if you could talk a little bit about your background as well and research and all of the fun things. That's a so nice picture. Yeah. <laughs> before children. <Younger. laughs> Three years ago. Before children. <laughs> you know, it's compared to uh, Professor Lu's picture and mine, you see that you know, the, the best part about Professor Lu is, I think he should never age. <laughs> <laughs> Even one day in the past 10 years no, 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 since no. I came here. You're so wrong. <laughs> I have a, one of my graduate students, he's a talker. He's, he's, he's not shy of telling me the bad stuff. So there was Just one day. Just listen to me. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. He, he, he told me one day, because that was the time I had my second baby, I was really, really fat, really good. Mm -hmm. And I looked really tired. And I. Even three stairs, I was like, you know, breathing, like I can't, you know, things are like that. So he's like, Professor, you're doomed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Change? Yeah, what? <laughs> something like, you just, there's no future or something like that. Wow, I hope I you found him. <laughs> no, I didn't. That is funding. Yeah, you can't say that. I should, but. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I was too nice, I guess. I, Oh man. Yeah. Anyways, Not he cool. graduated and I climbed out of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's kind of like I make that an encouragement. Yeah. Yeah. You, you that, can reverse that. You're not just change the world, you can change the professor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can change. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Let me take a final look at this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never seen that picture, so I easily find it. So I uh, have a similar uh, background. So. Mm -hmm. And I graduated from the Tsinghua University, my uh, uh, college, and it's uh, engineer physics. Mm -hmm. So everybody knows engineer physics, and so it's the uh, uh, it's not a nuclear engineer. So in that department, I learned a lot about the uh, general the nuclear physics, and but more on the engineering side, more on the uh, technology. Really nuclear technology development, like the uh, detector, radiation imaging, and the circuit, you know, how to get a signal, do the processing. So it's a wonderful time, as I learned a lot. It's, uh, <coughs> I still remember the, one of the uh, professors told me, uh, you're in the nuclear engineering field, it's engineering physics field, and you will learn a lot more than other engineering discipline. And it is true, the end up is I learned a lot. And however, is uh, after graduation, and uh, I came to the US to the University of Michigan to get my uh, PhD. But before that, I had no idea about the nuclear reactor. You probably couldn't imagine. And no idea, because I never took a course uh, in my uh, college. And my advisor wrote down two equations back at that time. And the first day I met him, and one is Maxwell you know, equation. You all know that electromagnetic field. And I learned that, I said, oh, I know this. The other is a neutron transport equation, a diffusion equation. I said, you know, I never heard about this. And I even don't know the limitations of that. And we talked about it you know, just a couple of days in the last week about the diffusion. And I said, oh, this is your first class. So from that moment, I started learning what it does a nuclear reactor look like, and learn all these terminologies. So from that moment, I stepped into that uh, big area. And so I got my uh, uh, PhD after that. i so lucky I, I got a job uh, here at RPI. And uh, I really tell people that I took a job that I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Our job is completely, it completely changed my mind of 
the understanding of being a professor, what does that mean? So I learned, you know, it's just a, a very uh, big transition. You know, yesterday, yesterday you was in the classroom and sit there and uh, hear about the professor's lecture. And then the next day, you st uh, stand on stage and start <laughs> teaching. <laughs> and so I really I declared myself as I'm a student emeritus. <laughs> <laughs> Graduate student emeritus. <laughs> Dr. And G, I think you're the first person in history who has seen the neutron transport equation and said, I want more of that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually say that or are you just accept it? <laughs> <laughs> Quickly accept it. <laughs> the, uh, so it's a big job. You know, being a PhD student, fresh PhD, you know, you just uh, university. Before you graduate, you got a GD and we give you an offer. It's, it's a great honor. And, uh, I visit here twice, and uh, a memory the second time, and that time is Mary just jumped to me. You decide come. <laughs> 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 yes, definitely, it's it's, it's almost uh, there, and uh, and after a couple months, and, uh, and I received the offer. I just signed that offer letter. It's, uh, it's uh, on the same day, <laughs> and so it's a it's a great uh, university. I see it's RPI. And our nuclear program is a you know, relatively small, but arguably I think it's a small, it's beautiful, and also it's powerful. And everybody knows everybody. And so we have a more kind of a chances to communicate personally to each other. And I welcome and any students who can just uh, you know, stop by my office, you know, just, just you know, chat or in a classroom. And if you take my course, and then I would love to check with everybody and doing a break. And so why I choose RPI, right? That, that's the question. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's a look at my whole uh, lifetime is I find that it's, it's I always do get the best choice. And that best choice sometimes in reality is the only choice. <laughs> uh, but it's always turned out the best to me. <laughs> when I jump from the high school to the Tsinghua University, that's my only choice because Tsinghua University give me the mission you know, this, mm -hmm. before I took any exam in the national. So give me that honor from there. And uh, then when I graduated, I, I got a chance to say, oh, why not stay just finish your graduate master so I can stay. So why not I stay? And when I applied to the U.S. and the Michigan gave me the offer, and uh, that's the only offer I got. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then after I uh, graduated from Michigan, the Nokia gave me the offer. That's the only offer I got too. <laughs> so sometimes some, life pushes yeah. you where you're meant to be. Is yeah, the way this I is kind of my it. destination <laughs> is already designed by the God. You know, <laughs> <laughs> And uh, if I look at back, it's, I do think it is the best. You know, I truly believe you know it's uh, is what you really experience. That's the great you know value, a resource, you know, and a great memory to you. And try to enjoy it. And uh, so, what what is the next question? The only the only other thing that you haven't answered, and you did that beautifully, um, would be what what kind of research do you do? Great question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my research, uh, it's, I usually just start, you know, see that, you know, in a classical way, that, you know, traditional way, or in a non-classical, in a non-traditional way, the, you know, my research rooted from the nuclear, traditional nuclear engineering and the reactor physics, you know, to understand why the, how the reactor works, you know, how we design that, how we make every piece of the components put together and make that device, make it work, and it's a safe device, and more important, we can control that. And we can control that in a way that works for us. So that's the uh, core part and around the nuclear reactors. And apart from that, you know, except that, and we also develop a lot of you know, these technologies 
And it's not that directly related to the rapture, but that some technologies can help people to, for example, detect radiation to uh, sensor something and uh, to do imaging and for the medical application. So, so my research is primarily on the reactor analysis, reactor design, uh, but meanwhile, I kind of step out to some kind of a novel application part. And talking about the radiation, one uh, work I'm doing right now is really to the NASA, and the care about their electronic devices, and whether it can survive the outer space, and the, the dials, and the transistors, you know things, right? And that we use it every day on our computers, it's everywhere. And people use it on the power unit, and make it just supply the power. But if it be using in the space, and the operating, we find if a heavy ion, when we see the heavy ion means some kind of ion, helium or argon or, or, or the uh, silver, you know, as the flying at high speed, high energy. If the heat comes in ice, what will happen? Then burn out. Because it just go to the device, generate a lot of electron hole pairs. And we all learn this in the semiconductor physics. And it start flying and the electric field. And once your current is high enough, you generate a lot of heat. And those heat just burn out the device. And so we help the NASA to understand why the device field and enter radiation heaven. And second is how can you change your design of the device to resist this burnout event. You know, it means even if you have a high down shooting, it's fine, it's still safe. And another research I'm doing is sort of is related to the Raptor you know, design. You have a lot of some tools to help you to build a model like a cat you know, and the geometry setup. And however, when people use these tools, and it's a, it's a lab developed tools, there's no such beautiful user face, and there's no such a, a beautiful features to help you develop that model. So we jump into, it's more on the computer science. And one example I can tell you is right now you use the Google email. When you write an email, you write just, before you write, you know, make the uh, name of the person who's already giving you a hint, this person. And how are you? It's just, just you know, look forward. All the whole thing is there. So we develop such kind of computer science features and to help the user to use the tools. And you probably will, uh, at that point, to learn the one tool called MSMP from mm -hmm. Los Alamos. You will use it. And it's a very kind of text script and the file. And when you write this file, you don't know if it's put the wrong, wrong information or correct or syntax there. And we develop some uh, computer science uh, capability, the feature, to help you. You write down one line, you really need to chop into every word to tell you Oh, you're wrong. No, you're correct. That's, that's kind of a feature there. So it's a computer science. You see that is staying in the nuclear. You can't just uh, think about the nuclear part. You need to kind of think what you call out of box, you know, to think about other area. And what happened in other area? And whether they can use those technologies developed from other area to help the nuclear. So make the first cut in the multi thing happen. Once that cross curtain can happen, you can connect with both sides, then you can make an innovation happen. Mm -hmm. And that's what kind of nowadays we do the research. And you stay in our own area, you know, it's hard to justify finding something really new. And the history I always kind of you know give the students now is all just go this way. And what does it mean is you always go up, you must make progress. But if you look at everything what you did, and there, it's probably the same thing. In history, people do that same thing. But we always declare we are innovative. We advance the society, advance technology. Why we say that? Because in other areas, the technology is advanced. And we can use them to just keep just going. And uh, one typical example is this phone. 
is kind of rigid, right? But nowadays, people can make this flexible. Mm -hmm. Put it on your skin. Just uh, kind of embed this foam with your skin. And it doesn't hurt if you put the needle there and uh, you just uh, kind of uh, just, uh, just squeeze it. And that's the new technology. It's there. And not in the market yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so. So, so, yeah, talking about my own research, but I want to give you more kind of <laughs> <laughs> So when we invite our faculty members to come and talk to you, to you guys um, at this meeting, we kind of give them a lot of latitude as to what, uh, how they'd like to approach it and what they'd like to do. And both um, Emily and Wei wanted to bring some students with them. So that's what these lovely people are here for. So I just wanted to have them introduce themselves and talk a little bit about um, why they're here, what their connection with the two faculty members are, and maybe just a little bit about their experience in the nuclear program here. And I'm going to start with Dante, because I know he doesn't mind talking. So yeah. I'm going to throw it over to him, because I know I can count on it for that. OK, um, my name is Dante. I'm a sophomore. Most of you probably already know me or have seen me before. Um, I'm in right now Weiji's uh, Fundamentals of Nuclear Engineering class with actually some of you guys. Um, last semester I took uh, Nuclear Phenomena with Professor Liu. Um, uh, I, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm a sophomore, so I'm about to do this sort of summer, you know, the summer art stuff. So if you guys have any questions about that, registration just happened and it was a little bit hectic, but I can. <laughs> Try to answer those questions. Um, yeah. And what's like? What's your dream job, Dante? And like, what's your what's your, what's your plan in nuclear engineering? Uh, I want to work in a uh, nuclear power specifically, but even doing like going further, doing research in like nuclear fusion, um, maybe uh, advanced reactors. Like a national lab kind of thing, or industry? Maybe a national lab, okay. maybe research. I don't really know. All right, you got time. You're a sophomore. You got plenty of time. Thank you. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm, um, I'm Emily as well. I work under Dr. Emily. Um, that's why we address each other. I'm like, dear Dr. Emily. And then she's like, mm, love it. Dear myself. <laughs> but um, I'm actually a mechanical engineer. I do work in her group because uh, Dr. Malavia introduced us to each other. She told me, or he told me about her uh, research with the concentrated solar power energy. Mm -hmm. And I am so for renewable energy that I was had to join and I had to get on board. Um, I was a master's student and finishing up on my master's um, this semester and then starting my PhD <gasps> life wow. in the summer. So um, it's fun. I like to learn. And I can't wait to see where this takes me. Awesome. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Jim? Oh, yes. Uh, I think I might win the award for both nonlinear mm. career path up here. I, um, so. I got my undergrad in RPI, nuclear engineering and engineering physics. Um, I did a few semesters in grad school here, and I, was, I think it was in one of your first classes that you taught, actually. Um, but I never really knew what I wanted to do. I just really knew what I didn't like. So I have 12 years in the Navy. Um, I spent 11 years at GE trying to do clean energy technology. Um, but, and I also did three years of consulting for New York State doing assistive technology development. Um, but it felt like time to come back because the nuclear team specifically, I think, is what a real innovation is. Mm -hmm. And I got my master's at a different school, and that small community, everyone helping thing was a huge part of the decision. Um, so please consider that broad, mm -hmm. disjointed expertise mm -hmm. available to you. Um, I think the big decision you're going to have at your stage is do you want to go into something like really research-based or industry, and they're very different paths. So please, if you don't know what you want to do, mm -hmm. welcome to the club. Um, I'm still figuring it out, but this is where I want to do it. <laughs> 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 awesome. awesome. I love lifelong learning. I think it's an awesome thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, how many Emily, of you, yeah. I think there was one question. I just sort of remember while we're discussing about okay. Sam that we want to do. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I just think that we forgot to say. Sure. Um, so I actually have a question even before I answer that. Okay. 
when they graduate from your yes. hub yes. and they are being handy to us, yes. can they still find you? Oh, of course. They know where I am. Okay, yes, they 100% yeah. know I am. Yeah. It's not like we wipe their memories, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. They, they you know, restart. They, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we have candy, and you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't say I'm never going to talk to them again. That's true. That's Sugar true. high. And you can always <laughs> come in and talk to okay. me, too. So, yeah, you might end up in between your uh, yeah. appointments. Right, you know where I am now. Good. So, yes, you're always welcome. And they will be cleared. You know, and they will have registered for fall, okay. um, and then you know they will register. They'll come potentially meet with you in the fall semester to get you know information and advice about spring, okay. um, and then they won't need to be cleared again until that spring for the following fall. And it depends on what their away semester is, of course. You know. I see. So, so here is my answer, and then kind of my catch up for all of these. Mm -hmm. um, for SAM requirement, of course, since we don't have that many advisees, feel free to talk to me. But sometimes there is a time frame difference. Like I have a student who, who are like, <gasps> only Friday afternoon I learned that my my thing is cold and my ticket is Monday morning. Right. I'm like, email your advisor and get it cleared first and then go talk to him or her. Okay, so it's like, yes, I do accept that if you want to say email, everything is fine. But when the, whenever you say everything is fine, I actually will go back to check CAP report or whatever report I can mm -hmm. see just to see if, it, if the TPA-wise things are looking okay. Mm -hmm. okay. If I don't see anything serious for long, I usually would just say, okay, that's fine, but still feel free to talk to me, but it's not like a required you have to talk to me. It's like that kind of a relationship mm -hmm. I have. But for people who have some warnings or something, I think it's it will be great to catch up with you. I would say you definitely want to talk to me first before you do the registration. But again, everything that you need, you can, of course, bring that questions to us. Having said that, most of the time for the questions related with curriculum, credits, some classes and things, I do send to these people <laughs> because I can't catch up with them. You know, there were changes and all these things, and like uh, the website is having trouble, you cannot graduate, all these type of problem. I send to them, I'm like, go fix. You know, or sometimes I even physically brought my student there, it's like, I need to learn too because I have no clue. So, yes, they are experts in that respect. For us, we're really more mentoring career, internship, job, dream, those type of things, really. Because try to figure out what you can do, what potentially you can do. Like some potential you don't know. Like I have an interesting question, like for my past many years, I still remember vividly even the first student that I was in shock. I was like, you know, you're doing great. Do you want to consider a PhD, graduate study? And she's like, can I? I'm like, yeah. And I can't afford it. You don't need to pay. You have a salary. I'm like, and she's like, I don't know. I said, that's why I'm here. So, <laughs> yes. So, these type of things, we know the information that is probably beyond what you think. So we bring that to you, but sometimes it does need time to develop the relationship so that I can talk to you those, and I see your potential, I will purposely bring those things to you and say, hey, here's some other things you've got to consider, or something like that. So please do so. And internship is another thing, which bring to the ARCH program problem. Mm -hmm. We frustrate, as a faculty of nuclear engineering, we frustrate. Do we still have leftover students? As simple as that, because we have contacts. Mm -hmm. And I, I just came back from Los Alamos. People, they were like, do you have students? <laughs> I'm like, I'm not sure. I can try. Mm -hmm. They say, we need 1,000 people. OK. <laughs> whole program is not that many. <laughs> what? I have six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are pretty good odds. Pick yeah. your job. Pick your job. And of course, in the middle, I was so panicked. I'm like texting one of my students. I said, uh, do you want to consider an internship at Los Alamos? And he's like, oh, it's a little too far from me. I'm like, gosh, you have a choice. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> All right. So we have problems like this, but we don't get that information. Um, we cannot even easily get it to everybody, even with six. And you guys don't easily get it from us, too, because the channels are not being so fluid, like you were able to touch all the information we have. 
Yeah. Um, so it's like that simple thing. I actually talked to the arts director in that program. I said, can we get the complete you know, uh, distribution of our students? And are there still any ones who need help? And then, or everybody already has a placement? You know, all that. They're like, oh, we're not sure. We're trying to get it right now. Okay. So, yeah. So I'm just telling you those things. Um, please be more proactive and approach us and get help. Uh, you wouldn't, you, um, sometimes the, the kind of information you get from us or get from communicating with us is beyond your imagination. So it's like, please do that for yourself and for us. Okay? That's why I burned down P. Exactly, you represent the NS yeah. chapter mm -hmm. to tell the students the resources you have for the Archer Weeks Master you can provide. You have the context of the Hindu. Yes. And also three of the people here are officers at the ANS. Oh, okay, slash great. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, also we have a web, uh, student nuclear advancement groups have a website where we list all of our like internships and opportunities at the ANS. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, also sometimes that's why I was talk to your advisor me more often than I know you want to find an internship once I get the information. Just, uh, you just came back from Los Amos so just mm -hmm. two weeks ago my Los Amos, the, uh, my former academic brother called me in the summer. Yeah, exactly. the summer. I have the same so problem. I, I, I think about it then I, I email with just the two or three PhD students, tell them CC my Academic brother is tell them, oh, mm -hmm. they may need the internship is interested because if I know your name, you give me that indication, I can just quickly, right away, just notify you. And then also, not only for internships and jobs after graduation, you know, if, if uh, students are interested in potential graduate school at other schools, you know, not only did you come from other schools, both of you with nuclear programs, but you also collaborate mm -hmm. with faculty in other places, and if students are interested I, in... We actually helped our students to even go to grad program of other schools. Sure, too. of course. And before the students left for the interview stuff, I'm like, just mention them that you know me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. So it, they work most of the time. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's a small world. <laughs> you yes, see nuclear is a very small community. And almost Everybody knows yeah. everybody. That's Which is really nice. Yeah, nationwide, yeah. 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 Everybody knows everybody. And we have very little uh, enemies. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I hope. Our, um, our program, people are not very, uh, you know, nasty. That's true. Yeah. That's very true. <laughs> so, so I want to throw it out uh, for all of you to ask some questions of anybody yeah. up here. No. You can anybody. ask about curriculum, right. research. But don't ask to do how to do the file because I'm yeah. How did your homework? There. What? About his homework? Yeah. Uh, oh, no, I was going to ask about that. Um, so, when you guys talk about like internships like Los Alamos, for example, a lot of those like national lab places usually have a um, security like, clearance. Yeah, security mm -hmm. clearance process. Um, so. That's like, why now is probably the best time, or, or even earlier is the best time for this summer. Okay, it has to be quite a few months. But not as bad as couple. Most atomic power lab. For most of atomic power lab, probably a year and a half. Yeah, a year and a half or something like that before. Yeah. And for yeah, for for Los Alamos or Ideal National Lab, I think now is still possible for for them to yeah. get this going. For most, yeah, for most of their national lab internship didn't require, and even like the Los Alamos or the Lismore, and they have a non. Clear and it's required uh, side. You know, different mm -hmm. It's more like a process. Yeah, unless your work is really is a, in, the, in the clearance and you can touch some material. Clearance. And, but for most of the internship, no. Mm -hmm. yeah. For internship, the actual problem is that clearance is they, they're <laughs> bureaucratic. So <laughs> the process takes time. <laughs> Did I, you have something you want to add, Robert? Yes, please. Um, <laughs> So <clears throat> my trajectory was also non-traditional, uh, but last summer I worked at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, mm -hmm. and 
in filling out the security clearance questionnaire. They wanted 10 years worth of where you lived, who you knew, basically questions that you will never have thought about in your life until you fill one of these out. Now, it dawned on me in filling that out that I've had nine jobs, lived in five states, and don't really know who to list as a reference of who knew me when I took one night class after work at insert name of community college here. Like, start now. Start keeping a record of where you've lived, like just important benchmark things like that. Because they ask you about vacations you've taken. Have you traveled out of the country? Like, just start thinking about it now and compiling that list now. Because in five years, you're not going to remember as well as you do now. So that was a really hard exercise in, wow, I've been way too many places and I'm doing this now. So. Keep a list Keep of a your list. roommates, even, right? Yeah. Because as you change roommates, they will want to know all of them. That was a terrible process, by the way. <laughs> or you can take twice. not that kind of job. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Good question, Kyle. Well, so a lot of the times, those first internships are just to get the security clearance. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to almost guarantee get an invite back. Because there's nobody competitive for the real work that don't have the clearance. And then as you apply for jobs, that becomes a huge mm. boost on your employment right. if you can say you have that security plan. Right. That is true. You're gonna put that right on your resume forever after that. Yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. So on the topic of Summer Arch, um, we have a very small major and we have some very specific classes mm -hmm. towards our major. Mm -hmm. So do we have a lot of options in taking these specific classes over the summer, or should we just steer towards more general? Well, classes? the nuclear department does not teach any nuclear specific classes over summer arch. They have made that decision <laughs> years ago. Um, so they are more general classes, you know, things like IED and MAO and ModCon. Um, Haas classes, PD2, PD3 is offered over the summer. Your computational elective is also offered over the summer. So even though there are no nuclear specific classes, um, you know, there are all those other classes to choose from. A hot off the press is we had a meeting with the department head today, mm -hmm. um, and one of the biggest complaints of the department students was navigating the courses, because you have to hit these different uh, loopholes and stuff. Uh, and the suggestion from the grad students was, you guys work together, pull together with the undergrad and grad students to say what courses you want, and then we can work with the professors to see about what courses to be offered. Because there's a lot in the course catalog that says available upon demand, but there's not a real good network of people working together to decide what that would be to allow them to get the class numbers up to offer them. And that's for things like technical electives technical and things electives, like that, yeah. right, Jim? Yeah. 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 So there are, you know, we can definitely plan, um, you know, keep in mind that we want to have enough classes for summer arch um, and we can keep that in mind for students who are doing the dual with mechanical and how many of you here are do oh a whole bunch of you awesome i knew i knew a bunch of you were but yeah um, well, I mean, <laughs> relatively speaking emily um, so there's a all a whole bunch of mechanical classes are offered over summer so that makes that super easy um, but we can also find other things. And one thing that students don't necessarily think of doing in the summer too is you could do research for credit if you wanted to do undergraduate research yes. during the summer. Um, are, are you? I think that's a great option actually. Um, and then um, you can use that as one of your nuclear engineering technical electives if you wanted to, or you could use it for credit for free electives if you're not doing the dual degree. So, um, and the summer's kind of a nice time to do research, I think, you know, campus is, is, is a little less intense, get a little less competition sometimes, you know, like I actually think that's a, a nice idea. Yeah, and then before your semester away, which is the second semester of junior mm -hmm. we try to make sure that the majority of the nuclear classes you already take them mm -hmm. so right. now you're well prepared for industry or national lab or wherever you have your internship or co-op so that was out of the good purpose that we designed this yeah. way and also the underlying is nobody wants to teach it oh absolutely <laughs> i mean you know i mean there's not that many nuclear faculty so yeah. you don't i, and I also totally because, get that because we all did Pretty good research, so we have research going on. Yeah, you have. Yeah. We don't. Right. We, we don't need that summer teaching. Sure, <laughs> sure. So um, I promise I get you out of here within an hour, and we're just about hitting that. 
So I don't want to preclude any other questions if you guys have questions, but I just wanted to ask the students um, just one thing, and I'm, I'm also going to ask all of you guys as well. Um, because these are first year students, is there anything that you wish you had known when you were a first year student um, that either something you might have done differently or something you didn't know that you kind of wish you knew, or just any general advice you might have for students finishing up their first year? And looking ahead, he is ready. Brian is so, so ready. So I have two, two points. Weeks. If it's already too late for you to have taken differential equations, have you guys already taken that? Okay. Most not. If you have not, <laughs> I'm not going to single out a professor because it's not appropriate. Do not take it with the professor that everybody says is the easy professor, because mm -hmm. all that will do is come back to bite you in the end. Do not do that doesn't mean you have to go for the guy who's going to make your life miserable, but don't go for the one that everybody's telling you to do, because it's just going to hurt you in the end. Uh, and the second point, speaking generally about research, um, I think it's a fantastic opportunity to put your foot in the water to see if you like it, to start thinking in that realm before you actually have to make a decision as, do I want to go to grad school? This is something that interests me. You have the opportunity to see what it's actually like and to be part of a program instead of just an arbitrary project. You're actually working on something real with people where this is what they do. And you get to try it and you get to see if that's something that interests you before you have to make a decision about it. Um, I really enjoy being part of conversations where there is no right answer. It's such a departure from your normal in class, two plus two is four. These are questions that don't have answers and you're part of that and you're contributing to that. And even as an undergrad, you have knowledge or perspective that can provide insight that may be vastly different from what the other people on your research team have seen or are considering or a lot of times the simple answer is the best answer. So people can tend to overcomplicate things and having a diverse perspective is very helpful to any project. And I really recommend you guys try and find some room in your schedules and take advantage of that opportunity. Awesome, thank you. Easy is not always best, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely not. That, I give that actual exact particular uh, class recommendation all the time <laughs> as well. Just because I've had, uh, particularly like I can think of a whole bunch of Aero students who went for the easy DFEQ teacher and then later on when they were in subsequent coursework that relied on knowledge of differential equations, they ended up having to teach themselves differential equations at the same time they were learning that advanced material. So, you know, while they said, yeah, Marie, that was an easy A, I'm really regretting that decision. So I've absolutely seen that verified over years. So easy's not always best, not always. Anybody else have any advice for first year students? If you'd like to, but you're not required to, Emily. It's totally your call, my friend. Um, well, to even <laughs> think back to, you know, freshman year, is a very hard thing because you kind of grow a lot as a person especially because you know it's the first time you're not at home you, high school is kind of an interesting bubble but then you get your bubble popped and you go somewhere else and you try to figure it out and i guess the only words of advice that i have to give is don't like it's gonna be it's, it's a little scary but you got to be open to it don't be afraid to you know talk to your classmates meet your friends talk to your teachers they're there for you. They're awesome to like go to office hours, use those resources because you want to gain. It's not almost it is a little bit of a networking, but it is like another relationship. Like you're not alone in this, you know, world of knowledge, and um, it's a really exciting place. And if you like research, it's a great way to make your resume more than what you did in high school. And you know, random babysitting job that you had, <laughs> that's for sure. So getting that kind of experience will help you get the summer arch internship. So even being a part of a project that you know you feel like maybe you're not as contributing as much as you're like, oh, I'm gonna finish this whole thing. No, you're gonna do an awesome part of it, and you're gonna help out other grad students do the bigger picture, and then you're gonna make you might have your big picture of your own. Awesome. Thank you.
for someone who didn't want to talk. That's hey, great I, things to yeah, share. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Jim, any advice from the old man? Yeah, I just Aww. wish I knew how much freedom and power I had at that stage. You know, coming out of high school and also the military, I just felt that I had to do what was on the pre-approved study plan, um, and I didn't feel like I had the right or actually they had the desire for me to offer my ideas. Um, so now coming back to grad school, I'll get an email that says, hey, do you want to do anything with this 45 page long list of opportunities? I'm like, yeah, I'd like these three. She's like, okay, get busy. So all of that is available to you right now. Um, expect that the first few ideas are like, eh, well, let's try to tweak it a little bit, but keep going with your ideas, and by the time you're done, you should be in control of everything that you want by the time you graduate. Awesome. Dante, anything that you wish you knew a year ago when you were in their wish shoes? I knew a year ago. A year ago. Or any um, advice you want to give to a first year? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you want to do anything in college, do it because you can. And my parents always tell me this, but once you're out of college, it's not so easy to just do like anything you want. So really try things when you have the opportunity. And also, uh, I don't know, become friendly with your class because you're going to, like your new geek class, mm. because you're going to be with them forever. <laughs> forever, <laughs> that's right. In groups and yes. senior you. design and lab groups and mm. all of that. So, yes. So become, become friends with them. Take care of each other and be nice to each other, for sure. Any advice any of you think that uh, you want a first year student to? I would follow up with them. Yes, I think. Just like the example I said about the grass school stuff, there's a lot of flexibility. I pretty much want to carry up with it um, that you may not notice, but you are really being able to do because in the past many years, I think two major advices I have given out the most. One is take some hard courses in summer which amazingly worked for many years, mm -hmm. especially ID, when it was mm -hmm. really, really notorious. Mm -hmm. I kind of forced some of my students working toward GPA because I said, yes, if your GPA is below 3.0, you're going to have trouble. You know, it's not, not like, eh, but it's going to bite you somewhere, which I hate to see that. It does, most time doesn't mean the students are really having, you know, any issues, just like it, be careful with that. So some, many times I advise them, say, take it in summer uh, ID and you are able to go from there. And that's one advice. The other one I constant, uh, consistently tell them is, you can take one more course and drop one later, please. Because otherwise you don't have a room to do that. Mm -hmm. If you don't take one extra class, what if one of the classes is so bad? You're gonna fall below the, the, the full-time student status. Your scholarship is gonna be gone, and all that. I'm like, how do you solve this problem? Please do that. And then, just like you said, you're like, they thought that is a Bible. I can't do anything. There has to be this plan. I'm like, no, please. <laughs> Something can be worked out. Yes. So those are the most two most valuable inputs I had in the past many years. So be more flexible. Aside from every other thing that they said is valuable, so awesome. Anything else you have to add, Wei? <laughs> I think it's pretty good. As I already said, mm -hmm. is uh, uh, a year ago when I did this uh, orientation and their, to the student and their kid was there. Mm -hmm. to, uh, I think as a uh, in addition to the slides information I presented, I built up. Kind of, I told students, uh, you know, the first year, you know, in the first years, I think about that. You know, uh, I suggest that you find a you know, club to join or any kind of a, this uh, uh, leadership opportunity, you know, to pick on that. And for example, a class of course, a final project, or semester long, and to become a group leader, and try to lead a project, or try to lead, or do something, and take one big chunk in the club, like the NAS, and do one big thing, and also uh, organize a team to do that, and to kind of experience that, uh, what we call the leadership, and it, 
not to make you kind of feel that in the end that success or so successful. They just want you to experience and being a leader and you become a person that put you on a hot spot that you need to be responsible and a couple more people are looking at you, you need to make a decision, you need to think about how to where to lead people to go and to accomplish one task. And so uh, how to organize some people don't kind of uh, keep up with the pace and uh, how to deal with that, you know, kind of let you experience. And that's sort of the real life in addition to the regular kind of course taking. You certainly need to be uh, watching for the, your course performance and time. And the second uh, point that I talk about is for our nuclear students and uh, your class, I think it's a, has a good, you know, from this year's opportunity. We add one numerical computing uh, class mm -hmm. to the curriculum in the second year. And uh, I think it's really good. And because before we, we don't have it. And the math is sort of the relative the weakness there. So mm -hmm. after we had that, I believe it will be much better. And beyond that, in the later semester, I always suggest to take a numerical computing course, mm -hmm. a regular numerical computing course. And uh, I think it's the 4,800. Yep, 4,800, yeah. 4, yeah. 4, and so that's a good one. So at least take that one. Mm -hmm. And to let you to know, you know, in reality, how nuclear engineer accomplish a nuclear engineering task, and uh, except that do the real thing by experiment, fabrication, uh, do the real <coughs> field work, and half of people may just just do the modeling simulation, and it's definitely not that we is you learn from Cap 1, Cap 2, or some DPQ, and do a simple analytical way, it's all numerical computing. Mm -hmm. And so that course can really connect you to that path and to the real uh, reality. And uh, so that's my uh, second suggestion. So that's a great one, thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, because, um, you know, they can use that as a free elective in their curriculum. Oh, it's a four credit right. class, yeah. so it can be used as free elective. It's not like it's going to be in addition to their program. So that's a great suggestion. Awesome. Thank you. Anything you have to add, Kate, before we send these guys home? Yes, I was going to say get connected with the club. So that's definitely a good suggestion. That was one thing that saved me in college was having a support group away from home. Um, the other thing is, um, as we talked about, it's a really nice thing that nuclear is small. You guys are a nice, close-knit family. But we're always trying to keep at least some of you here in each class, so we have to do a lot of recruiting to get the word out that nuclear engineering is a thing that we have at RPI. So we have, you know, we reach out to students a lot more than maybe with mechanical and aero, where those numbers are a little higher. So you may get emails from me because we may have an initiative to try to get more prospective students to enroll here or to come visit so um, i would just encourage you and not just for recruiting purposes but to make maine as a department better um, i know ryan and jim were part of a panel today where our department had um, <laughs> wanted students to tell him how how everything's going in the department so we really do care we want to be better where we can be better and and help the students as much as we can so um, try to take advantage of that if if you're able and um, willing to do that so um, that, that's it awesome okay. awesome thank you all for coming thank you all for coming and taking time out of your busy <laughs> research really appreciate it and thank you guys for coming and oh, always Kate, always thanks for being the backup there um, and these guys will hang around for a few minutes and if you want to come up and grab a cookie and talk to any of them Go for it. Otherwise, if you're ready for dinner, you know, I get that too. <laughs> and I hope to see you in the next month before registration. Have a good night.